Hey Canucks fans, I hope you're well. Still beaming from last night's 4-1 victory over the Montreal Canadiens. And if I may, I just want to share with you my joke from last night. So we know that in French, goal is le boue. And we know that there are so many Montreal Canadiens fans at the game last night. So given that the Canucks scored four times, this was my joke from last night. Le boue, le boue, le boue, le boue, le boue hoo hoo. Go home Montreal Canadiens fans. I know not my finest work, but I did work on that before my live stream last night. So yes, the Canucks were back at practice today. By the way, I was in a suite last night. It was pretty sweet. I didn't, wasn't planning to go to the game, so I didn't have my jersey. I actually wore a dress shirt and dress slacks. And um, maybe that should be my new outfit of choice for the game. Canucks back at practice today. And the biggest news from practice today was that Elias Lindholm, or as some of you pointed out, Elias Lindholm. Regardless, Lindholm was missing from practice. And I didn't notice anything wrong with him last night, except for the fact that he went 3 for 13, so 3 and 10 in the face-off circle. And he never is that bad in the face-off circle. In fact, the Canucks rarely go under 50% for the game as a team, um, as a team for any game with Lindholm in the lineup. So I, I didn't notice at the game that he was losing all these face-offs, but then I, I read the stat later. Then I saw the news from today that he missed practice. So with Lindholm missing practice, then um, Rick Target kind of set us up for that because yesterday when he was talking about Ian Cole being a bit banged up and not, uh, dressing to last night he also said that Elias Lindholm was a bit banged up and playing through some things as well so I don't I don't, I don't think that was intentional from Rick Tockett setting it up for when the time that it, Lindholm actually doesn't play then he can say well I told you last week or earlier this week that he was banged up no I I just think uh, Rick Tockett's very honest and I love that about him I love many things about him but he's very honest in those media availability availability so Lindholm played last night but did, did not practice today. So in his place was Teddy Bluger. So on that line, and then Phil DiGiuseppe, who's a healthy scratch, got to practice again. So the Canucks lined up like this. Top six were the same. There was still PD with Hoglander and Garland. It was still Miller with Besser and Suter. And then the third line was Bluger for Lindholm. So it was Bluger between Lafferty and Mikheyev, who actually had a really good game, both of those guys last night. And then the fourth line was Niels Oman with Podkosen again, but now PDG, uh, Phil G. Giuseppe slid into that, into that, um, that spot. Now, Rick Tockett did say that he expects Lindholm to play tomorrow against his former team, Calgary. By the way, it'd be interesting to see if uh, Kuzmenko gets a, gets a, gets a, like a tribute video. At the very end of my live stream, we kind of debated for the last five minutes. In fact, my son Sean made a $10 bet with me whether or not Kuzmenko would get a welcome back video because... I was there last night. Tanner Pearson didn't get a video. They flashed his uh, image on the screen. They uh, like, well, it was real time of him getting ready for a face-off and said, Al Murdoch says, I'm like, he played over 200 games for the blue and green. Please welcome back Tanner Pearson. And Pearson basically almost didn't like want to be bothered. I think he, he didn't even do, wave his hand or a stick. He just did a nod and then crouched down and got ready for the face-off. So if Tanner Pearson plays over 200 games and only gets a quick 10 second mention why would Kuzmenko get a, a welcome back video, whether it's 20 seconds, 30 seconds or whatever? Then some people were saying, including my son, Sean was saying, well, he was very popular, po more popular than Pearson and it was so recent. I get all that, but I still bet the $10 that he is not going to get a, a welcome video. Uh, rather, he'll just get an acknowledgement like Tanner Pearson did. Let me know in the comments below what you think. If you think that Kuzmenko will or is deserving of a welcome back video, whether it's 20, 30 seconds or whatever. I'm just curious to know what you think. I, I say no. I say no. Just as I'm not sure if Lindholm and Zadorov will get actual welcome back videos when they go to Calgary, rather, as opposed to a simple acknowledgement. Anyways, that was a small tangent, a small digression. So Rick Talker does think that Elias Lindholm will play tomorrow night. And if he is ready to go, expect him to just slide back into a spot between McKayev and Lafferty. Expect Bluger to go down between Park Holes and likely Niels Oman because that was the winning lineup Oman scored and PDG would be the healthy scratch. So it's either Lindholm or PDG that's going to sit probably tomorrow on, up front. The blue line, we didn't hear or see any tweets about their, their pairings. And so it's probably Hughes and Hronik, Cole and Susie, and then some combination of Zadorov and either Cole, sorry, Hughes and Hronik, uh, Susie and Myers, and then some combination of Zadora with Cole or Zadora with Juleson and then whoever it isn't, that guy skates with it, with Mark Freeman on the fourth pairing. 
Now, Rick Tockett today, his media availability was not committal as to whether or not Ian Cole will sit out a second straight game tomorrow night or if he if he draws in for someone else. How do you take out Noel Juleson? He had a really good game, including six hits. So we that's going to be an interesting story to watch. But uh, hopefully whoever sits out, it, it takes one for the team. And it's, it's a blessing that guys are getting some maintenance days and getting uh, kind of restored for the playoff run. Speaking of one other one other injury note, I was listening to Elliot Friedman on the Jeff Merrick show this morning while I was driving to work. Elliot Friedman said that he would not be surprised if Demko doesn't return until a week and a half before the season ends. A week and a half before the season ends. And that kind of lines up um, to what we've been hearing. Now, a week and a half before the season ends on April 18, a week and a half is 10 or 11 days. So now we're looking at April 7 or April 8. Well, Thatcher Demko got injured on March 9th against Winnipeg. So April 7 or April 8, it sounds like exactly a month. But technically, it's four weeks plus one or two days. Now, when Demko first got hurt on Saturday night, the first indication was from, from Farhan Lodgy that he'd be out two to three weeks. And then TSN expanded that to two to four weeks. And then Rick Dollywell and the Moj and others who were speculating that it was his knee then took out the two and they said three to four weeks. So everyone basically said between two and four weeks. Two was very optimistic. Four weeks was probably worst case scenario. So if... Rick talk, sorry, Rick talk. If Thatcher Demko does indeed return a week and a half before the end of the regular season, that is April 7, April 8, and that would be basically four weeks and a day or two. If you look at it in terms of month, from March 9 to April 8, that's technically less than a month. But of course, um, when you when you look at that, you have to count more than seven weeks in a in a day, kind of seven, seven week. Let's try that again. You have to count more than seven days in a week. So yes, by by the numbers on the calendar from March 9 to April 8, that looks like it's a day less than a month, but when you count up the weeks, it's actually four weeks plus one or two days. I hope that makes sense. No big deal, splitting hairs, basically all to say that if Demko does return on April 7, April 8, around there, it would indeed be four weeks of absence. And that was kind of the conservative um, thing that people were saying all along. So nothing earth shattering there. We just wanted Demko back sooner as opposed to later. But if Casey, dis- two things, if Casey DeSmith is playing well, and the Canucks are winning. That's good. And if it means more rest for Demko, so he's even more fresh for the playoffs, that's a good thing as well. So Canucks fans, some tidbits for you there today. Elias Lindholm, not at practice, might play tomorrow. Ian Cole may may not sit a second straight game tomorrow night. And then we have Thatcher Demko. Um, looks like on track to, to make it a four-week um, recovery from his knee injury. And finally, in the comments, let me know about this Kuzmenko thing. Do you think he's going to get, do you think he's deserving of a welcome back video tomorrow night, again, when the Canucks host the Flames, versus uh, a simple acknowledgement that Tanner Pearson got last night when he visited with the Montreal Canadiens? Let me know in the comments below what you think. Shout out to my sponsors, Van City Experts Real Estate, Perform Transform, Personal Training Weight Loss. Thank you, legendary Lucas Gates. Legendary Carol Bovlander, legendary Andrew Chang, Hall of Fame franchise members as well for your support. And thanks to all of you for watching, liking, and subscribing. So on your way out, please subscribe. Please like the video. You can leave a tip. You can become a member. You can upgrade your own membership. And let me know in the comments your thoughts on any of these injury notes or and or will Kuzmenko get a welcome back video tomorrow night when the Flames come to town. No live stream tonight because it's Friday. I don't stream on Friday nights and Saturday nights, but uh, I'll check in with another video tomorrow. And then don't forget members, uh, Hall of Fame and Legends. We have our group Zoom chat, 8.30 on Sunday night. Okay, friends, stay safe, stay healthy. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Have a great rest of your Friday. God bless and go Canucks go.